What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Yankees Avenue Show on the Yankees Avenue YouTube channel. As usual, I'm Patrick Hennessy. That's Dan Mark. Dan, how are we doing on this magnificent Friday morning? Not just a Friday morning, Pat, but a September Friday morning. It's nice and crisp and chilly outside. It feels like fall. I'm ready to go. And more importantly, Jason Dominguez, the Martian, is ready to go. And Austin Wells. We'll talk about him as well. But, yo, vibes are kind of good today as a Yankee fan, I feel like. Coming off a first series win since, I believe, the Royals sweep in July. Yeah. And we got the kids coming up, bro. I'm doing good. I am doing good, and I mean that. How are you? Yeah, no, no vibes are high. I was telling you right before we we hit that little red record button. This is the most excited I've been to record an episode, and it's also it feels like the most topic filled episode for a while. Um, and I think that's really what we could be expecting here in September with the kids coming up. There's a lot of fun stuff going on in Yankee Land. Um, we'll talk about it. So get your seatbelt, bro, and buckle up because this one's gonna be a, a fun little ride. Um, before we do that, though, want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Foco. Use code Yankees Avenue at checkout. Save 15% off your purchase. We'll show you guys some fun stuff later. But topic number one, Dan, we have to talk about the story of the day, the story of the weekend, the story for the rest of the season. Jason Dominguez, Austin Wells, both being called up to the Yankees, what, top five prospects, I guess we could say. Well, so um, Dominguez is number two. Wells actually has fallen to number eight somehow, but still very really? touted. Yeah. Either way. It's mostly because the Yankees' system is so blossoming right now but yes continue sure yeah but both very highly touted prospects um it's kind of funny because we were talking about this on i want to say episode 100 we brought up like the possibility of dominguez coming up because we kind of knew Pereira was almost a lock we knew wells was almost a lock but then we were like yo if you're bringing up the kids why not bring up dominguez and, and kind of see what he could do but i think he's the biggest wild card here right and obviously like we know wells is a little bit more seasoned um, he spent more time at double A, spent more time at triple A, um, obviously a little bit older than Dominguez too. I believe Wells is 24. Dominguez is only 20 years old, bro. Um, only having like a week of triple A experience. So that's why I think Dominguez is the huge wild card here, because I think I said this on last episode too. Um, this could go one of two ways, right? One, it could be one of those things where it's like, he comes up and he looks so bad to the point where People are questioning why the Yankees even brought him up so early and whether this is going to kill his confidence or whatever. But then on the flip side, I think that there's a lot more positive to potentially gain from this than negative. Because if he comes up and, bro, even if he hits like 230 with a few home runs, that's valuable big league experience that he could then carry over into 2024 when we're expecting him I, at this point now that he's coming up in September I'm fully expecting him to be the Yankees starting center fielder going into next season um, which is a big deal so getting that big league experience under his belt this September it's kind of reminiscent of Judge in 2016 right because Judge came up in 2016 um, obviously different age sure but he didn't look too great um, but he was able to use those struggles in his 2016 month and a half month because he got hurt and carried that into his 2017 season. So I think regardless, all things considered here, very excited about both of these guys, but I think Dominguez is really going to be the one to watch. A hundred percent. And first, let me say it does. And I want to comment because in the end, he's making the moves. Cashman is so trying to save some face this week. I mean, you have the DFA of Josh Donaldson, then you call up the kids on top of Pereira a couple weeks ago. I think he's trying to get the fire Brian Cashman night canceled, which me and Pat, I believe probably are still going to. We'll see. But, yo, it's it's one of those things, especially with Dominguez, man, where he kind of had a similar, I don't want to say prospect fatigue, because he really hasn't been around that long. The Yankees signed him, for those who don't know, in the 2019 to 2020 offseason to a $5 million deal. And ever since then, he's been one of the highest touted prospects in baseball. But also, like, what do we get at age 16? So it's like, man, when is this guy actually going to be up? I didn't think it was going to be this year. As good of a spring as he had, and even with um, the way his second half has gone, double A and triple A, he just was tearing the cover off the ball. Like, I never really thought he'd be this close or it happened now, but it is. And, yeah, with Austin Wells as as well, huh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting because what does this mean for next year? Is this leading the way into a starting job for the 2024 season? It's – I'm very excited for for their de debuts. I just I, – I wonder what do they have to do to lock in a job? Or is it no matter what going to be a spring training competition – next year because what have i talked about a lot on this show i still want to contend in 2024 i think you can do a nice 2017 like hybrid where all right you call the kids see what they got well still yeah maybe go out and sign a cody ballinger or add to the team in some way so you're still contending while retooling or rebuilding if you will so with that said like i, I want jason to really show me something right here like i don't want you to come out here and bat 150 now if you do i get it you're only 20 years old like big leagues are hard i understand also with wells 
if they do show up, though, I think you could look at a situation where, yeah, next year, Jason Dominguez is a lock to start in either center or left field. And with Austin Wells, it'll be interesting because you know the dude can hit. That's all he's ever done, whether it's at college. He was a first-round pick in 2020. Ever since then, single A, double A, and now triple A, the dude rakes. The defense, though. Is he our catcher of the future all of a sudden? Which the Yankees have uh, said he's made enough defensive strides to where they feel like good enough to keep having him develop there. The arm apparently isn't amazing, but he works well with pitchers. And I guess he seems like a very good like uh, clubhouse guy. Probably gets along with the pitching staff, which that's a big part as well. But that's what's really going to be interesting for me. Like how much can these guys solidify and lock a job for next year? And especially the case with Wells, what is his job long term? Is it catcher or are we talking more corner outfield? Because the big thing about these two guys is – um, at least for me, and you know what, something we've noticed over the Yankees' uh, lineups over this core is that their lack of balance, right? We just had too many right-handed hitters. Well, Jason Dominguez is a switch hitter, and Austin Wells bats left-handed. So if you can get these guys' bats going, like that could be a huge difference maker for the future of this team. So I'm very, very excited. Obviously, yeah, uh, I think Wells is also intriguing to see, like you said, where he's going to play, right? Because the way I'm looking at it is, we're going into the 2024 season now. Austin Wells is your starting catcher. That's just the way I'm looking at it. Yeah. So I think that the month of September, I want to see him catching majority of the Yankees games. Um, And I know that's kind of tough because now you have three catchers and Rortvet has to catch for Cole. So then when does Higgy play? But I think at this point, bro, I want to see Wells get more starts over Higgy. Like it just makes the most sense. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I'm a little bit, but then I'm also, sorry, sorry this... to interrupt. Go ahead, like, no, what go. do you do when Trevino comes back next year, too? It becomes a very, like, is Wells your number one and Trevino's the backup? Because at the end of the day, Trevino's a, a platinum glove catcher. So what do you do? Right. So for me, it's with Trevino, the second he went down from injury, I was like, okay, he's obviously too valuable to just let go. He's going to come back and have a role. I would like to think, okay, Wells balls out. He's the starting catcher for next year. Trevino's your backup. But what really, really scares me with that, dude, Knowing Wells' history, like, oh, not the history, but the whole talk of, like, he's not the best defensively. I feel like the first the first side of, like, a mishap, then you'll have the talk of, oh, get Trevino in there. Especially if the problem could be with the pitchers. They love Trevino to death throwing to him, which yeah. I'll compliment to Trevino. But, I mean, the dude, that's sort of, like, six weeks in 2022. He's a 600 below 600 OPS catcher. Whereas Wells, the upside of him is, like, bro, we might be looking at what we thought Gary Sanchez could be, but also from the left side. So, that's really intriguing, and that's something that, I mean, we've talked about a lot ever since Gary left, and, like, with this year, how bad our catchers have done offensively. It's like, bro, it, it, we, we kind of miss having a catcher who can hit. Catchers who can rake, man. I mean, that really, really, I mean, for obvious reasons, like, um, totally changes the landscape of your lineup. So if you can get Wells to ball out, which this is all a big, big if, because there's still prospects, and even if they don't play well uh, in September this year, they could come out next year, like you said, with Judge, and totally change the story. But, yeah, this is exciting time. I'm looking forward to it. And it kind of puts a, a like a, it's like a breath of fresh air for the rest of the season, a season that I thought was done. Not really much reason to watch outside of the fact that it's our job to do so. Now I'm like looking forward to watching the Yankees again, which is a nice feeling that I didn't think I'd have for the last month. Yeah, no, I agree. You know? And I, I kind of, I said this to myself when the news first came out that they were calling up Wells and Dominguez. I finally have a reason to watch in September now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of crazy because obviously they're out of the postseason hunt. And rather than watching Garrett Cole starts watching him chase Cy Young, what else, what other reason did you have for watching the the September 2023 New York Yankees? And now we have a major reason to see the development of these kids. And one thing that I do want to say, and it might come off bad, but I don't really care. I hope that what we see from Dominguez and Wells makes me feel a little bit better inside about our future compared to what we've seen from Peraza and Pereira. Because I'm going to be honest, I have not been impressed at all with what we've seen from Peraza and Pereira. Um, Nothing about those guys, like, makes me believe, oh, going into next season, like, Pereira needs to be our starting left fielder, or we need to trade Glaber so Peraza could could take over at second base. I haven't gotten those vibes at all. And granted, very, very small sample size. Mm -hmm. But I just, I want a feeling inside where Dominguez comes up and, like, hits a home run in his first major league at bat. Or, like, Wells is batting 500 in his first week. Like, I need some sort of, like, somebody coming up and absolutely tearing the cover off the ball similar to like what we've seen in the past right because I feel like up until very recently the Yankees would call it prospects and they would be absolute fireballs in their first few games first few weeks whatever bro we're talking about like Judge and Austin homering in their first at bats Clint Frazier I think homered in his second game and Duhar obviously first came game up it was, was in Houston actually Clint Frazier was it his first yeah game? yeah 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 and then with with Gary too bro I just want to say I mean 
talk about going into 2017 and still having like the sense of okay, we're gonna compete this year. Gary's emerged in 16, like really put that on the, on the map, bro. So the way I feel is you can't expect the world of these two guys. And if they both struggle, that's fine. They're prospects, they're young, especially Dominguez. I would like one of them to wow me. And yes. real quick on uh Pereira and Peraza. Pereira, I think it's just been way too small of a sample. And he's also has shown some flashes of having good at bats and putting together, you know, some good hits. Peraza, though, man. I will say, while not exactly having like a fair shake of a playing time, we are now looking at 130 big league at bats where he has a 570 OPS. Peraza has just flat out not hit, which I mean, it's almost like you know is good. Traded him, right? It's that's what I was kind of about to say. Like I don't <laughs> want to run a whole thing like I always do, but man, the value is not as high as it was even three months ago or six months ago. You could have traded him. Now I feel like you probably go into next year. There's gonna be competitions galore. I think even if Dominguez, unless he totally like. I think Dominguez has a Gary Sanchez like year the rest of the season. Then maybe he's a lock for next year. But I think more likely than not, we'll see Pereira versus Jason for a left field competition of some sorts. And then at third base, you might see Peraza compete for that job. And then, yeah, Austin Wells possibly starting at catcher. It's a fun time. It's very fun. And I'm looking at this with a very, I'm just so open to what these guys may do. I don't, I don't want to put like too much pressure on them, but I'd like to see one of them at least kind of excel. But yeah, that's kind of where so- I'm at. Based on that, like we, I think we're kind of in the same boat where we want to see at least one of these guys kind of like knock our socks off, yeah, per se. Yeah, the end of September comes, the end of the season comes. Who do you think that guy will end up being, Wells or Dominguez? If I had a pick, I think Wells is gonna fucking mash. I really, really do. Jason, I just want to give the benefit of the doubt for the fact that he's 20 years old. But I mean, even him, he's just throwing at AAA. So, like, the fan of me wants to say both. I, I like the idea of Wells in the short porch. I think he's really good. Like, offensively, I buy into him so much. So much. It's just a matter of the defense. So, if I had a pick, I think it'll be I think it'll be Wells. But also, like, the hype behind Jason. Jason can just bat 300 and technically say do worse than Wells. Like, say Jason has, like, an 800 OPS compared to, say, if Wells has a 900. Jason may still be the star of the show because everybody's so hyped about him going in and Dude, like you see the New York Post yesterday, bro. Like Martian landing. This is a big ass deal, man. Like one of the probably, probably the most coveted prospects since beyond Glaber. Like I feel like Jason's bigger than Glaber was. Don't you feel that no, way? No, I disagree. Really? No, I, yeah. I mean, when yeah. Glaber came up, he was like the number two prospect in baseball. Fair, know? no fair. I just yeah. feel like for for Yankee fans, like Dominguez has been around for so long, and just like the hype is it's exciting. It's an exciting time. Yeah, and I I agree. I think that. Wells is the more likely of the two to go off, but I think it would mean so much more if Dominguez was the one that kind of like came up and shocked the world and kind of just like went on a, a month long tear. It would be like very like Juan Soto esque, bro. Like a twenty year old, it would give me so much faith going into next season. It's not even funny, dude. So a, as much as I think Wells is probably going to be the guy to go off and just impress the most out of all these prospects coming up, I think Dominguez could be the most game changing one. You want to get in topic number two? Let's talk about Harrison Bader real quick. Yes, um, yes. He's now officially a Cincinnati Red. I saw on Twitter, bro, that it kind of bothered me a little bit, but to each his own. People were literally like in tears over Harrison Bader leaving the New York Yankees. Um, I guess kind of That's reflecting on his Yankee tenure, I think the the way to describe it was mediocre um, and expected. I think everything that we saw from Harris, Harrison Bader as a New York Yankee was – what we expected, uh, maybe even worse, because we talked about this pretty briefly on the last episode. But offensively, I would say he was worse than we expect him to. I, I saw this stat where um, if you're looking at Harrison Bader's 2023 season offensively, it's worse than Aaron Hicks's. It's worse than uh, I don't want to say Josh Donaldson, but he right right around there, bro. He, he's had a yeah. really bad 2023 season, hasn't stayed healthy besides that stellar postseason run offensively. Um, he just hasn't been there for the team. And I know like he, he was a fun, likable guy, but I I'm not shedding a single tear at all that he's leaving New York. Yeah. I think people have gotten way out of line. And part of it is the fact of, you know, we haven't seen many great Yankees in our fandom being young, younger fans. So they kind of just grab hold of people that, you know, to his credit, he wanted to be a Yankee. He's a New York kid. So I get it from that standpoint, but yeah, I mean, I think the whole, like, parade of oh Bader we're gonna miss him so much he was a great Yankee. I mean, let's bro yeah like, it, it's it's a little ridiculous I mean the guy was 
not having a great year at all. I mean, you mentioned how bad he was offensively in similar, uh, similar to Josh Donaldson. You're not wrong. 76 WRC plus he had this year. Josh Donaldson was at a set. He's at a 79. So he's technically actually been worse than Josh <laughs> Donaldson this year, or right around the same, but yeah, no, it's, he has not been good. And the main problem for him was that he just can't hit righties point blank period. I mean, lefties pretty damn good, really good. One dot OPS in 67 at bats, but righties man 510 OPS he just essentially was completely ineffective and useless against right-handed pitching and overall I think a lot of this isn't his fault like I'm not like necessarily disappointed in the the Bader tenure because I think it's more of a problem where the Yankees the way they used him I mean how can you have Harrison Bader batting fourth batting fifth batting sixth I think if he was batting say in the nine hole and you were strictly just having him for his defense uh the good base running and you know he can go on a streak where he looks really good and I don't want to say can carry you, but can be an effective part of the lineup at points during the season. I think that would have been fine. So it was more so on the Yankees' terrible roster for exposing how bad he is offensively to like an even further extent. But yeah, man, this is I think the move makes sense. No, it makes a lot of Yankees, sense. Because what the Yankees want to do. Because now you bring up do, Dominguez, bro. Well, from that, yes, absolutely. But also, the Yankees, I, it's, I don't have a definitive answer on this. So I apologize to people watching at home because I don't even fully know. But the Yankees entering that move before getting rid of Bader – we're at $292 million with taxes and all that. If you get below 290, that's that's the threshold. You get below 290, you get a better draft pick. You also get taxed less this coming offseason. So they're trying to get below that 290 figure. Bader, I believe, had around one and a half to two million left. So that's totally off the books. The Reds are on the hook for that now. I don't know concrete if this gets them under, but if it does, if that was the motivation behind it, like that could go a long way. Could lead to us possibly spending more in the offseason. Because you know the Yankees are so hell-bent on resetting the tax every three years, we may have just done it with this move. So we may have just reset the tax entering the offseason instead of trying to do it this winter, which definitely could be advantageous. Advent- Is that a word? I never used that before. Advantageous? No, that's a really good word. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, like all that. right. Advantageous. Props. Let's go. So you know what I'm saying? Um, so from that standpoint, totally get it. And yeah, you kind of knew the guy was leaving after this year anyways. I mean, we've agreed yeah. that we're pr- pretty much done with him. So you weren't resigning him. You want to get the kids up, and you may have just set yourself up nicely payroll-wise. It was no burner. And I'm glad he's going to the Reds. Very glad he's going to the Reds. When I saw that, I was oh, thank God. Because the first report I saw was from uh, – not any report, but somebody said he was going to the Blue Jays. And I was like, oh, Because <laughs> that, that would have sucked. Like, even though, you know, I'm not, like, crying over him. Seeing Bader go to get ALE team. Really, imagine you went to, like, Houston or something. I guess. Him going to Cincy is nice. Yeah, um – I, I definitely agree. I think there's more to gain from this than lose. Um, obviously you said like the the luxury tax thing. Um, and like I said, bring up Dominguez as a result to replace him. Um, one thing that in in his little uh departure press conference that that kind of pissed me off a little bit, bro. He really? said he said, "I'm a New York City kid." Okay. You're not a New York City kid, Harrison Bader. Um, I know this bothers I, like, people, yeah. Bro, it, Chester, it bothers right? me a lot. Yeah, bro. Like, Bronxville is not New York City. It is It is like East Chester, West Chester, one of those two things. Like, don't claim you're a New York City kid. And I put this on Twitter, and someone was like, oh, but Pat, he went to high school in Riverdale. Dude, I don't care. Like, you could have just said, like, you're a New Yorker. You know what I mean? It, it's the fact that, like, you want to claim you're a New York City kid. You're not Harrison Bader, and you never will be. And uh, yeah, maybe it's just something you're that crazy, like, bro. You're crazy. No, like, maybe, I've maybe seen people complain no, about no, because it's it's probably like because you're from Tom's River, so it's like someone claiming they're from Tom's River, but they're from like I don't know Point Pleasant. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, but that's hilarious that you say that because you know I am from actually Seaside Park. I just say Tom's River because nobody oh, knows you're a problem. Where, what's Seaside Park? Like no, I'm. But also, you know, maybe this is how it is with Bader. I was born or grew up in seaside part this is where i live but like i went to school in tom's river i played little league in tom's river so i consider myself from the area i don't blame bader for that because he probably did have quite like listen i know it's different like i don't i don't really know how the whole thing works like people i guess say the same thing about staten island too like staten island you're but it technically is new york city is it okay so yeah i don't know how the whole like philosophy on the whole situation i i, I new think york city fine. has five i boroughs. think it's fine ready Yes. Queens, Manhattan, Bronx, Brooklyn, Staten Island. If you're from one of those birds, you're from New York City. If you're from Long Island, you're not going to be like, oh, I'm from New York. I'm a New York City kid. No, you're from Westchester, bro. That's where you're from. You went to high school in Riverdale, which is technically the Bronx. But, bro, let's be honest. If you know anything about Riverdale, like whoever is from there doesn't even claim they're from the Bronx, bro. Like that's how like 
exclusive they are. So I'm just saying it bothered me a little bit to hear him say, I'm hey, a New York City. That's the native New York, and you know, I can't like dispute that because I'm not one. But yo, I thought his exit press pressers were pretty damn good, actually. If there's one thing like that would make like no, like, it, it was legit. Like you could tell he liked being a Yankee, and I do appreciate that. I don't want to get it twisted just because I'm not like in tears over him leaving. I think he handled it perfectly. And yeah, he was a Yankee fan growing up. So, I mean, at least have that. And he was a New Yorker at the very least. So sure. it makes sense why he'd have an attachment to this team. You could tell he truly appreciated it, which I as a fan do appreciate. Like, I really do. Did you hear how he found out? Apparently, he was like sitting in the clubhouse watching ESPN. Yeah, I don't give a shit about that. Like, I don't think that makes the Yankees like some bad organization for not telling him. It's really not that big a deal. I, I think it's weird. Though. Waivers. And he was headed out in three weeks. Like, that's the shit, bro. I'm sorry that like beat up on the Yankees while they're down. Sure. Like, I don't care about that crap. Like, the no, rest of I think it's weird not that. I think it's weird, though, for sure. I thought the interview was funny. He was like, I never watch ESPN. I was watching ESPN, and there I am. I'm on waivers. Yeah, but, like, because I, I, I kind of put myself in 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 those shoes, right? Like, you have a job. You're at your job. And the way you find out that, like, you're being booted is from a third-party source. You know what I mean? It, I feel like they could have at least told him, be like, yo, Vader, like, we're putting you on waivers. Yeah, like, sure. that's a simple I'm not saying I'm not saying it's ideal, yeah. But also, yeah. I don't think it's... Why it's not a huge deal. Are not a huge deal. Shit show. But uh, there's more reasons Harrison, than that. You're you're not from New York City. Little Good luck boy. to him though. Are you wishing him well? Like I'll sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I, bro, I, I there's never been a player. Maybe there has been, but I can't think of one right now where they left the Yankees and I was like, yo, I hope they do so poorly. <laughs> you know? There have been players like that for me. Name one. You know, I will I don't have one off the top of my head, but you know who's not one? We're going to talk about it, so I won't go into it. But Donaldson, I don't have ill will towards Donaldson, I don't think. You know the Blue Jays are uh, activating Chad Green. Are they really? Yeah, apparently he's coming back. I almost signed him in my uh, my franchise mode, but he wanted too much money. So I told him to go fuck himself. Sorry, Chad. You want $7 million coming off Tommy Uh John? (laughs) Take a seat. He had Tommy John in the game? Well, that's, you know, I just assume that's how it works. Yeah, yeah, technically. Okay, that's fine. I'll go, dude. Before we get into topic number three, we want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Foco, F-O-C-O, Dan. I still need to get you those shorts, but be sure to check them out. They have so much stuff going on. Yankees, Mets, Jets, Giants. Dan has his shoes. They're not in sport mode. They're in casual mode. Always. I got my bobbleheads always sitting right here. It makes me feel so good about myself. So you're um, you're different than me. You take them out of the box, but good for yeah. you. Yeah. I uh Yeah, so I, was, I woke up this morning probably around 7.30. Me and Pat were recording at 9.00. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go out and get a quick little Starbucks run, you know? But I was kind of in a rush because we had a show coming up, right? So what did I do? I just threw these on, casual mode, was comfy as hell, cruised my way down to Starbucks, got my latte. And yeah, would I have been able to do that without Foco is what I'm asking. I don't Probably think not. so. No, I, no. I, I, I did I have time to put shoes on? No. Did I have time to put Crocs on that had the Yankee logo and look sick? Absolutely. So go Bro. Foco, shout out uh, Cody Yankees Avenue. 15%. Speaking of Foco, um, maybe you could like pop a picture of this on the screen if you'd like. Maybe. I don't know how much time we have <laughs> in the post edit. But I don't know if you saw the Phillies, my 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 team going into the playoffs, they all of them arrived to the game yesterday in Foco Phillies overalls. Bro, Bryce oh. Harper looked so sexy, bro. Like, no, I I I can say that because dude, he No, had, I'm not roasting you. He had no shirt on. Okay, you know how, like how we did it with no shirt and we looked like, yeah. like a bunch of dweebs? Bro, he looked absolutely chiseled. You got That's you got kind of how I looked. But dude, I don't want to even I can't talk about Bryce Harper anymore, man. From wow. seeing the three hundredth homer it hurts. Yeah. and no, it really like really, really does, man. I know. Really does. Like somebody put out a tweet the other day, just real quick. They're like, Man, the alternative world where the Yankees get got Shohei, he didn't dodge us, and then we get Harper instead of Stanton. Bro, I don't even need to go that far. You still, you should have still just gotten Harper after Stan. Can you imagine, man? I mean, I saw his. We ran out of baseball today, where he was just talking about how much he loves Philly, and you're hearing him gas at the Philly fans and how much he feels like a part of the the Philly they family, him, the community, bro. all that. And I'm just like, man, that could have been us. He wanted it to be with us. Remember that picture? Hell, if I throw something up, it might be this. The picture of uh, Bryce Harper looking at uh, Mickey Mantle's number in Monument Park. I remember seeing that entering the 2019 offseason. He's like, yo, this is happening. This has to happen. How could it not happen? This has always been the dream, the destiny. Bryce Harper will be a Yankee. We may have won a World Series by now if he was. It Bro, just sucks. Yankees it's didn't sad. like his defense. They wouldn't, they wouldn't even give even him a conversation. I know. No, it's a shame. Like, We've got about fact, a length. But. The fact that he came out and said like he wanted to talk to the Yankees and they wouldn't even talk to him. Like I feel like that should have just been the the key for Brian Cashman's demise, bro. Like he 
just, th- just every time I think like, oh, maybe Cashman could stay, I keep repeating that in my head and be like, no, this dude needs to go, bro. And on the topic of Stan, kind of, you know, I love him, but you can't go into next year with him as your four hitter. I think they will, but, and also let's just say this, it's not even Stan's fault, that being the case. I mean, we're now we're going to what, year six? Do we honestly expect on Carlos Stan to still be the Yankees cleanup hitter in year six of this deal? Like we're getting towards the tail end of it. Like we No, but I also this- don't think he's done. No, I don't think so either. I think Stan's now... His peak season, he might be able to replicate a 2021. I think if you can get a 2021 out of him where he stays relatively healthy for like 130-something games and hit you 30-plus homers, yeah, have an OPS of 800, I think that's reasonable to dream about. But there also is the floor now where I could see him running out like a, a 750 OPS again next year, which it'd be you know nice if I think he gets it depends there this on. season. He's at like 720. I think, I think it depends on whether or not the Yankees are competitive because I view Stan as a player – where he flourishes when he's in like a competitive environment. And if the Yankees are once again, like feeble next season, he's not really playing for anything. I could definitely see another down year, but if the Yankees are in the playoff I mean, next year, I could see him putting up an 800 OPS easily. See, I don't even like that logic though. Cause he could, I know what you're saying, but and also, like, it could very well be up to him if they are. If he Maybe. plays well, I mean, that could change the situation. I, you know, I love Stan, but we got to have a bounce back year next year while also acknowledging that, yo, this dude is going to be 34. Yeah. 35. Like we're now legitimately getting to the tail end. I mean, Bryce Harper, bro. I know, uh, man. It's sad. Topic number three. Let's talk about Anthony Volpe. Uh, very quickly. Yes. The first Yankee rookie to have a 2020 season. Uh, I guess now kind of looking at his year as a whole, a lot of ups, lots of downs. Um, if anybody in the comments mentions chicken parm, I'm going to lose my mind because it's, it's <laughs> at this point, but I, I, I am impressed with the revelation of Anthony Volpe. Um, I think it's nice to see. I think it gives a lot of positivity going into 2024 and kind of seeing how his rookie season went. Maybe the deep struggles are, are out of the way. But yeah, I, I think a 2020 season, it's tough to not be happy with that, right? Of course. I think even before this, it was it had become a successful rookie season. I mean, First of all, let's just say that was a clutch ass homer yesterday. I know we're out of things, but damn, bro, two outs in the ninth inning and he just shoots that ball over right field. 20 homers on the year, man. That's nice. 21 stolen bases. That's nice. Although he really has kind of been falling off with the speed a little bit. And that is something I will say that does concern me. I'm going to do a live check in on baseball savant right now. Yo, can I, can I, uh, sure. th- this is one thing that I saw someone in the comments post, and I, I think it's something cool we can maybe do like, after the season towards the end of the season, like looking back on our preseason takes and kind Mm. of evaluating them. Cause I remember preseason. One thing that I did say was I think that Anthony Volpe was going to see like an increase of power, but I think his speed was going to suffer as a result. Like I, so, and that's kind of what we've been seeing lately. Right. Yeah. So he only has, I believe two stolen bases since the beginning of August. Now that's someone you mentioned, dude, is Feo. Let's have a little respect. Oh, shout out. Yeah. Shout out to fucking Feo. But yo, anyway, so here's my, my numbers I was looking for. We've kind of alluded to this. Volpe is not like lightning fast. He's just really good at getting good jumps. Not exactly like he has 79 sprint speed. Which is nice. Very good. He's not like lightning quick. Only thing that concerns me a little bit is I don't know if he's going to be like a 40 stolen base guy because I feel like the league, and we saw this, him get picked off yesterday in the series finale against Detroit. I think the league might catch up a little bit, and that's what we're seeing. But bottom line is Anthony Volpe is headed for a above three war season as a rookie, which is higher than Derek Jeter did in his rookie year. He had a 2.2. And you mentioned the chicken palm. I won't say those exact words per se, although I just did. But since that date, June 13th, man, he has a 124 WRC plus. Batting 253, OBP of 332, slugging 479. Volpe is a piece that you can be legitimately excited for going into next season. And one stat I want to read, um, kind of going back to topic two from Katie Sharp. If Oswald Peraza, Everson Pereira, Anthony Volpe, and Jason Dominguez all start together in a game this weekend, it will be the first time the Yankees have four position players age 23 or younger in the same starting lineup since 1969. Wow. We're a nice. young squad, bro, and it's kind of cool because Volpe's like the captain of that young squad. I watched, I read an interview. Uh, I don't know. Not actually the captain, bro. I'm saying more so it's crazy, yo. Like this 22-year-old kid, they're asking him about like advice he could give to like Austin Wells, Jason Dominguez, Peraza, because he's now been around. And he's, I do look at him as one of the more like kind of a veteran on the team now. Do you not? No. No, no. Oh, really? Oh, see, I um, do. I, I, I do. He especially now that they got him batting third, like he's a staple of this franchise now, bro. And I feel like you can see a couple weeks ago when it happened, the Yanks were still kind of in things and they went through that bad losing streak. He was speaking for the team. 
when other guys weren't, I think he's really found, and you can see the way he looks at shortstop now too. Like he's very, very comfortable. And obviously that comes with success he's having, but like, it really feels like he's like a fixture on the Yankees team now officially with the season he's had. He's been great. I don't get a leadership vibe from him um, at all. I, I still kind of view him as just... like, as like the little kid kind of just like tagging mm-hmm. along judge and Rizzo and them. You know what I mean? See, I, 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 I'm past that with him. I think he's went to the next tier. I really, really do. And even if not, bro, I mean, you know who I think can give that leadership vibe very, very quickly, just based Austin on Wells. personality. Yes, bro. I think just everything about Wells and what we've seen from his character and just on the field presence, off the field presence. I think he gives that leadership vibe. Um, and that's why I'm really intrigued to see what he does when he comes up. Yeah, no, it's that's definitely fair, I think. But um, yeah, even just on the season overall, man, the OPS is above 700. The OBP is getting close to 300 at 296. Just overall, I mean, been a really, really solid year. Not necessarily like rookie of the year worthy, but I mean, outside of the strikeouts, which just, even those have come down a little bit. He went from, so he's around, let's see, he's at a 28% K rate on the season, but since the chicken parm, he's 24%. So he's made some slight improvements since. And that's really the only main thing I feel like you got to see him work on. Other than that, we're, we've seen a polished player over the last three or four months, which is a double, yeah. especially where he was the first couple. Last thing I will say on Volpe is I, I will be very keen to watch in 2024 um, whether or not he can stay consistent because I think that's really going to be – that was kind of the key of the 2023 season, right? Like there were such drastic highs and lows. We just want to see him put it all together. And then a guy like Glaber, who who I do want to touch on very briefly because he's been the definition of inconsistency throughout his Yankee career, and it's kind of left everyone with like – a bad taste in their mouth, regardless of how good his numbers were at the end of each season. So as far as Glaber goes, um, because we were talking about Sunday's game, I was so ready after Sunday's game to come on here and be like, yo, I'm done saying Glaber's a nice player. Like we can officially say he's a good player. He's having a really good season and shout out to Glaber Torres. And it goes back to what I always say about Glaber, bro. He's the definition of one step forward, two steps backwards. And it's so frustrating at this point because every time I want to sit here and compliment him, bang, he he goes 0 for 4 with three strikeouts and then throws the ball into the crowd to kind of give the Yankees a walk-off loss. It's so frustrating at this point. And I think that's just why we have to keep viewing it is I don't view Glaber Torres as a long-term piece of the Yankees. And I don't Mm. think his value is ever going to be higher than it's going to be after the 2023 season. So I think the Yankees should do everything in their power this offseason. And I know they probably won't find like a replacement as good or better, but see what his trade value is this offseason, bro. See what you could get for him, because I, I don't think it will ever be higher. And I genuinely cannot see the Yankees winning a World Series with Glaber Torres at the top of your lineup. Man, I, I really disagree. I know we're coming off that error, which was a bad error for sure. But, but you I mean, know I'm not just saying that because of the error. Like, this is a No, 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 no. No, of, of course not. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. But, dude, the season, like, he's made so much of an improvement this year. And you look at the season numbers. I mean, it's not just a matter of, like, yo, he's at a 121 WRC+, plus, which essentially is his 2018-2019 level of hitting, which you always wonder, can he get back to that? His rookie year, he was a 121. 2019, the year he had 38 homers, he was a 125. So, now being at a 121 this year, he's right around like, yeah, 20, a little bit better than 20% better than a league average hitter. But not even just that. You also have the fact of, bro, he's dropped his K rate down substantially. He was in those, that 2018, 2019 year, right around 20 to 25%. Last year, even was 22.6%. This year, he's dropped it down to 14%. He's become one of the, I mean, not even one of like, he, you could argue he's the best second base, best hitting second baseman, at least power wise in the American League while also striking out at, like, prime DJ LeMahieu rates. I mean, he's walking more as well. Like, and outside of that little era, I mean, overall the defense, I feel like, hasn't been a problem. Like, it's it's still... I feel like it hasn't been good, though. I think it's been... I mean, let me check the actual numbers on it. Uh, so he's at... Let's see. So, okay, so he's at minus one defensive run save, minus one outs above average. So he's been a little bit worse than league average, but that's pretty much right around league average. I think Labor Torres is by no means a problem with this team, and I think losing... One of the best hitting second baseman and uh, best hitting second baseman in baseball would just hurt this team going forward. And when you think about the replacement, what that would be, it's Oswald Peraza. We just talked about how poorly he would hit. I think the Yankees would be screwing themselves in the foot if they were to get rid of him next year, unless there's a major haul that you just have no choice but to say yes to. I would not be actively seeking to trade Glaber Torres. I really, really wouldn't. I think he's been one of the few bright spots this year, and he's really, really had a nice season. I mean, the OPS is now, let me get my calculator out, but I believe it's now over 800. He's at 
let's see, 339 plus 459. So, okay, 798 OPS. But 23 homers, man, like, war's going to be three to four. He's a good player, man. Like, I'm officially cemented on that. Glaber Torres is a good-ass player, and I'm happy to have him on the Yankees, and I want to see him extended. I do. That's where I go. I, I don't want to get traded. I want him to be extended. But do you see where I'm coming from when I say that every time I want to, like, finally sit down and compliment him, he does something so stupid where it's kind of just like, damn, bro, like, what are you doing? Yeah. I, and it I, happens I, often. See, for me, it's more the inconsistency is what I would be worried about because I don't think Glaber has those blunders that often. Whether it's I think base running or defensively, it seems like it's base probably running, about once every couple weeks. He does bro. some dumb dumb stuff with base running. The defense, I truly, unless I'm just blind and not for remembering things, like, I don't have a problem with the defense. The base running, you're, you're right about – but also the inconsistency and the fact that, okay, he's in a hot streak right now. Like we're just getting, we're just falling in love while he's hitting. But when there's reason why he's hitting even better, knowing the adjustments that he's made with, he's really um, applying the the double tap to strike approach more, which probably is leading to awesome. his yeah. strongly reduced K rate. And he's talked about the adjustments that he made. And he also mentioned how like at the ulcer break, it was good for him to reset. And he also was hanging out with some of his old hitting coaches and, you know, chopping it up with them. And not that he was having a bad season at that point by any means, he was having a nice year, but the fact that we're kind of seeing the results of the adjustments he's making and like the work he's putting into plate, it makes sense why he's hitting so well. And I think, yo, like we may be reaching a ceiling that's even higher than that 2019 season. Like, I think not that he's going to be like a 40 homer bat, but yo, Glaber Torres very well. I mean, we got a month left. He may finish with 30 homers this year while being yeah. 25% better than league average hitter for half by the end of the year with, in my opinion, decent enough defense. Like, yo, for a team that can't hit for a fucking shit, why would you want to get rid of this guy? Is yeah. And, and I feel like what bothers me the most about the Glaber situation, to kind of put a cap on it, is that obviously what we've seen from him offensively is is great, bro. He's having a great offensive season. But it just bothers me because I think that it's so easy for him to be able to put it all together. Like, I feel like the defensive miscues are so easy for him to fix because I feel like most of the time it's a, a result of him just kind of being lackadaisical. And same thing with the base running stuff. Um, I feel like the base running miscues are just a result of him not being there mentally. And I feel like if he's – he, it's so there for him to be able to improve the defense and to improve the base running and just kind of make himself a complete player. But it bothers me that he hasn't. You know, what, yes, but I think what should bother you more so is I think it's a, a reflection on like the whole team having that issue. Because remember, it's not just Glaber Torres in terms of the base running, at least it's a, a Yankee 2023 problem, period. Now, I don't know if that changes when which I don't even know if it's going to happen, by the way. But let's say Boone goes and along with Boone going, typically that means like the coaches around him probably kind of go like his bench coaches, maybe like Luis Rojas, the first base coach. Like They'll probably go as well. So you get like some new coaches around him and the team, period. I'd like to think we see the base running improve. But also, yo, like, not calling him a prospect anymore by any means, but he still is just 26. So, like, when I say – I don't like when I, that, though. No, but when I say, like, we could still be seeing what the actual true ceiling is for Glaber, I think that's a valid statement. Like, we're now at the point where we're entering Glaber towards his prime. So, I think this is the floor is what we're looking at right now around, like, you know, a 25-30 homer bat being pretty – like, one of the better hitting second baseman in baseball. That's the floor, in my opinion. I think we can get even higher than that. And for that reason, yo, like – and for that, he's like the only guy that can hit right now, besides Judge. Yeah, I'm I want him. I want to keep him next year, dude. I really, really do. Like, I'm no, firm I'm, on it. I, I need, I need to see a little bit more. I don't want to say effort, but improvement in his lowest points in order for me to finally be like, yeah, extend him. But we'll oh, see. I hear you. Um, let's, let's run through this the, one quick. Yeah, let's talk about uh, the state of the team because you know how Steinbrenner came out and spoke once again. Uh, to kind of summarize the the quotes very briefly. Uh, apparently this off season, they're going to be looking at everything. He called the season, I believe a quote unquote disaster. Um, and they're going to evaluate, they're going to get an outside company to evaluate the team. Um, mostly the analytics department. Uh, I guess that's kind of what failed the Yankees the most this season, but the way I'm looking at this and the way I'm kind of perceiving these house time burner quotes, maybe with a little positive twist here is I think that by, throwing out the outside company thing here and being like, yo, we're bringing in someone to evaluate from, from the outside and see where we're going wrong. I think it sets up perfectly. Brian Cashman being fired. I, I don't really? think that there's anything more perfect because this, this would be the perfect scenario. I can't think of anything more perfect where how Simon, how could be like the outside company told me that we kind of just had a clean house. The like, it, the blood's not on my hands. And this is the only scenario where he would be able to do that and not be like, 
I, I fired my dad's like long term guy, bro. This would be it. it's the perfect excuse for how Simon to be able to wipe everything clean and start fresh. So you th- so what you think like they bring in the company Cashman gets pissed and he walks away or is this his way of saying like because here's the way I see it real quick. I think this is like, yo, you're doing everything but what you need to do. It's like, bro, you're saying, OK, all this shit is wrong, but all this shit you're saying is wrong falls directly under the man who's your GM that's in charge yeah. of what's going wrong. Like, bro, the reason but our that's analytics what the outside sucks company is going to say, I would like to think so. Yes. But it's like at that point, bro, like you're kind of. You know, there's probably a saying for it. And if I was a better host, I'd be able to say it off riff. But no. I think this is like a way of like dodging what you really got to do and just like working around. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, just like go all in. If you think you think he's avoiding the real problem, right? It's like, and I'm not saying this isn't a problem. I think it is. But like the reason it is a problem is because you have the wrong man running the ship. If you just get rid of that man and start fresh, you think it's that entirely. I think Steiner is so afraid to do it. And in a way I get it because Cashman has such a plan in place from like the Yankees philosophy is so like, minor league up that you can't just really same with like firing Boone in a way which concerns me like they're all such in lockstep like each level each part of the the, the franchise that like you can't just really fire one guy because that blows up the entire fucking thing and the minor league system is working well right now like I feel like that the analytics side of things and the way they're approaching hitting in the mi- hitting in the minors is actually working like they're destroying the cover off the ball but like I don't know I just don't know if this is the way to go although apparently I saw on Twitter the Astros I guess did the same thing after 2017 so it's clearly worked out for them i don't know shit about the analytics company so i can't really talk about that but i'll at least say this i'm glad that the yankees and steinbrenner know there's changes that need to be made i just don't know if we're approaching it the right way bro if how if we come out of this offseason and cashman is gone boone is gone I might give Hal Steinbrenner a big pat on the back, bro. Oh, my because... God, dude. You'd have to fucking, like, I would make out with him, dude. I mean, like, like that would be a, a miracle. But Cashman's not going anywhere. I think now we have to start worrying about, like, is Boone going? And I don't even want him to go anywhere, but. No, but, it, bro, he has to. Like, I can't see a scenario where, like, you could even defend Aaron Boone remaining Yankees manager. I can't see it, bro. I mean. It's, it, like, I could I maybe could. see, like, a small idea for someone, like, defending Cashman to stay at GM just because, but I can't see any defense of Aaron Boone at this point. I think you, you Boone not being fired is indefensible if you fire Cashman. Because that's but the if bare you keep minimum. Cashman, why not just keep Boone? I think if you keep Cashman, fuck it, keep everybody, and you're clearly complacent. And the way Boone's talking about I mean, what else is he going to say? But I get the vibe like Boone is – legitimately going to be a part of all these kids' futures. The way he's talking. No, like we thought that I about get. Girardi, though. See, I did we though? I did. I mean, I was a junior in high school, so I don't know what I was thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, man. I actually, I'm gonna say, like, I think there's a legit 50 50 shot. I don't know if the, I don't think the Yankees know what they want to do right now with Boone. Like, I think there's a possibility he comes back. I think Cashman's a lock. I think Boone, there's a decent chance he comes back with just maybe you shake up the coaches around him. Like, I think maybe, like, Luis that Rojas so may go, like, dumb, some bro. shit like that. It'd be whack. No, it'd be totally... That's what they did after 2021. Stupid. And, and but that that's that's why I'm sitting here and saying, like, how Simon can't come out and Brian Cashman can't come out and say that this season's a complete and utter failure, disaster, or however, however they want to describe it, and then Not go out in the offseason and do, and do nothing. Right. You know what I mean? You right. can't do that. So that's why I'm expecting at the very minimum, Boone is gone. And I think Cashman has to be gone. And how Simon finally has to put his money where his mouth is. And if you're going to come out publicly and say this stuff, now you actually have to act because you're the only person that can change things. Yeah. And also, let me say, like, this could have a big effect. I don't want to act like this isn't a big deal. I just, I really don't know much about the analytics coming. So I don't really know how to comment on it. But I'll say, like, for the plan for this offseason, man, like, if we just had, or assuming we keep Cashman. And then as a fan, I won't lie, like, I do like the idea of cleaning house with the coaching staff, which would include Aaron Boone. So let's say you do that. You bring in a new analytics department. And overall, it feels like there is a shakeup within the organization. I think that's kind of like the flesh of blood we need uh, or the pound of flesh we need as fans just a little bit. A shakeup with the coaching staff, bring in some new analytics, sure, whatever. Make a relatively big free agent signing, Cody Ballinger, let's say, and then maybe get a starting pitcher. Go in also with, okay, you're going to have Jason Dominguez, Everson Pereira battling for left field or center field. Austin Wells probably your starting catcher. Of course, you have Anthony Volpe, and you still got Judge in his prime. You got Cole in his prime. Like you could have an off season, like even without Brian Cashman, that pleases fans enough to have them. I feel like excited for twenty twenty four, which I agree. ultimately is going to be the goal for Steinbrenner. It's all about selling tickets, right? So 
there's a world where like there's a pathway where you can like amend these wounds as much as possible. Is amend a word? I don't know. Working on. Oh, it is. Yeah. Word. Fuck yeah, bro. Yeah, that's like one um, of the first words in history. Like you know, constitution really? amendments. Yeah. Bet. But yeah, nah. So I feel like there is a pathway to uh to figuring this whole thing out. It's just gonna be quite messy. I feel like, which we want Agreed. to be messy. It should be messy. The season was. I love messy. it messy. Yeah. I bro. I, I have heard that about you. I don't want to oh, say from yeah. who, but I have heard okay. that about you. Okay. Oh, uh, you want to get in topic number five real quick? Yeah, let's do it. What if I just said uh, no? What if I was like, no, I don't. Then I'd be like, all right, wrap up the show. <laughs> no, let's um, do it. Yeah, topic number five. Uh, Josh Donaldson, Yankee legend. Um, maybe in Monument Park, he might be at Old Timers Day. Who knows? Um, he's signing with the Brewers. There's a chance that we see him in the Bronx next weekend as a Milwaukee Brewer. Um, he signed a minor league deal, but I think you said you read an article where he's likely going to be up within the next week or so. Which That's bro, the handshake agreement, yeah. That will be absolutely insane, him coming back to Yankee Stadium next week. After we were just talking on the last episode about how he might not be coming back at all this season, like his career might be over, who knows. And now we could be seeing him play for a playoff team against the Yankees next weekend. So I'm I'm very intrigued to see the potential crowd reaction there. Yeah, and I'm I'm curious how so if you're in the stands, what are you doing? And it's I'm the like, same like... exact thing because we had this conversation when Aaron Hicks came back to New York, right? And okay. I'm I'm viewing Josh Donaldson the same way I'm viewing Hicks where it's kind of just like in different reaction, bro. Like like cool. Like it's a former Yankee. I will I can't sit there and boo josh donaldson on the opposing team i think you look dumb no no no. i don't i don't think anybody looks dumb at all i think you have more than the right to boo but i don't know i think I, it's I, corny bro no 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 like to boo fan, anybody like, is corny see no no no. I, I won't go that far and i also i'll say like yo if i was like four or five claws deep and i'm just chilling at a ball club or at a ballpark like i probably would join in the boost too maybe but i'll say this like i never felt like donaldson like screwed me in the ass like i don't think he ever said anything unless I'm forgetting that he was. I don't think he ever said anything or did something. No, it's that just me feel an like... interesting. Yeah. Okay. Is that that interesting? Screw me in the ass. Yeah. I, I'd never heard that one before. Yeah. Well, okay. point is, I don't think Donaldson ever like legit slighted me besides his play. And when that's the case, it's just one of those things like it didn't work out here. I'm more mad at like, like if Brian Cashman happened to be walking out at bat for Josh yeah. Donaldson, then I'd boo my fucking ass off. He's like, yo, you're the reason this dude is here worst trade of all time and look what happened but for Donaldson's sake like the dude just I, I really will boo somebody for just not performing I would boo a like a Carl Pavano that to me is like the perfect example of a, a booing okay a guy that just clearly didn't want to play didn't want to be here as a piece of a, sh- a piece of shit like okay you boo that guy but if somebody like you know Donaldson wanted to play well obviously yeah I, you know, I just but with that said yo like I have no problem with anybody who wants to boo him and he he will get it. like if we're going to talk about predictions bro I mean it's gonna be a, you know it's gonna no, be a loud ass boo. Loud it's, ass boo. It's gonna be bad, but I don't know. That that's just how I stand on every player. Like I I can't remember last time like a mm-hmm. an opposing player or like a Yankee came up to bat and I decided, oh, I'm gonna stand up and boo this guy. Oh, opposing you know, players. Like, you know what's funny you say that? Actually, the last time I probably did boo an opposing player was like when crazy. we went to the Houston game. No, no, 2022, man. I booed the fuck out. Oh no, to 2021. Summer August against the Twins, I booed the hell out of Josh Donaldson so much. Really? So over this, yeah, because at that time he was coming off the uh, where well, he was the roasting Cole, coal. Yeah. yeah, so I hated him. So I was like calling him a p word and mf or like pretty dumb. So security. Oh, we don't curse on the show now. The p word just feels so <laughs> vulgar. I didn't want to say it, but yeah, no, that was probably the shout last out time. Christina, I, shout out Christina. Yeah, that was probably the last time I legit like viciously booed an opposing player was Josh Donaldson. Donaldson funny enough. But yeah, no, I can't remember the last like Yankee returning Yankee that I would boo. Like, I don't know. You gotta like slight really me know. or do me wrong. It's not. It's not like a... I have a question because we're on this topic now, and yeah. I'm thinking because it's very fresh, right? Josh Donaldson coming back to Yankee Stadium will be very fresh. Aaron Hicks when he came back was very fresh, so fans mm-hmm. definitely were boo. Like they still hated them. But Gary Sanchez comes back to New York. Let's say, I don't know, next year with the Padres, per se. Do you think he gets booed? Because I don't think so. I think Gary gets cheered. I think it's been I think time heals all wounds. I, I, if you boo Gary Sanchez, first of all, if you boo, like, you're a fucking loser. That'd be whack. I think he might be right. Like, I think he might get cheered. Yeah, like, I think so, too. Enough to where, like, 
there won't be booze. There'll be slight cheers. So you probably would hear the cheers. Like I, I think, think like, ever so slightly. It won't be like a standing O. It won't be no, a standing no, o. no, no. But I think most people kind of realize that if they're an intelligent fan, at least, and I know a lot of the people who go to the games are pretty casual, but I think most people have kind of realized Gary Sanchez wasn't that bad with the Yankees. I changed my stance and the most people that go to games are pretty casual thing, by the way. I think like really? the surrounding area, like around home plate in the dugout, sure, those like the corporate losers. But like I feel like Yankee Stadium is so involved, so invested. Like I think they are a lot of times like filled with like the smart fans. Um, I think if you stood outside Yankee Stadium and you interviewed 10 people and you asked them to name five people in today's starting lineup, I would bet you that half of them couldn't. Outside of the sections I just talked about. No, I'm saying like outside the stadium, just grabbing people walking in. Maybe. I think they I think they could name like Judge, Glaber, Volpe, probably Jason. I don't know Glaber. No. Some of them not. I don't know. But anyways. Dude, Dominguez. I would ah, I mean, anyways. Maybe like Judge Stanton Volpe. I think the fact that this the trade was so bad, like people almost have forgiven Gary, like, bro, like yeah. All right. Maybe we didn't like you, but we didn't want this to lead into 600 OPS Josh Donaldson that they probably have almost forgiven him a little bit. I'm just on the topic of Gary, bro, which we haven't talked about Gary in a minute. So fucking, you know, you know, let me be. What do you think he gets this offseason, bro? My, yo, my prediction, brother. Remember, he was when he signed with the Mets, but I said Gary's going to go off and it's going to lead to him signing a multi year deal. Do you think he okay. gets like a two year deal in free agency? I think he gets like two years, 24 million. I could see something like I could see like a two year twenty yeah something like that yeah I wonder with who I, he'll get paid I, I think like I Gary think he's get like had a, bag. a really I think he good would, season yeah he's having a nice year and dude who gasses him up more than anybody the fucking Padres ace Blake Snell who I love him by the way I wish Yankees would go out and get him just from like a I love him but um I feel like the Padres which I'm surprised Gary. I'm I'm still surprised by that I'm still that surprised. I, lo- I love Snell yeah it, he really? doesn't seem like the type of guy you'd like he's very outspoken like is he though he's very just like he's like my kind. Co- and when it is like I, he's the kind of people like I would like like to chill with. Like he very much seems yeah, sure. like a like he's fucking kick it. Like I don't know. Like watch some football, be chilling. Like he seems like a cool actor. And hey, you brought it up, pal. Not me. So before we close the show, we how many weeks little, now? Let's find out. Okay, so fifty-one days, nineteen hours, and thirty-four minutes. I've nice. been vape free, and that's dead nice. ass. No bullshit. No, um, that's awesome. I've saved uh, two hundred twenty-two dollars. It says. Oh um, yeah, which is nice. Thanks, brother. Um, yo, good show today, man. Nice little Friday great show. Episode. I, I, get I this will fucking... say, no, th- this was probably a show that I'm most happy about in probably like a two week. months. Okay, no, no. okay, since, good since show episode one hundred. Okay, I even dude, one was fired too. Yo, point is, no, but you know what time. I mean. Topics wise, I think this yes. was the most rich episode we've had in a long. This time. is going to be an episode where I look forward to filling out the graphic of topics. Like it's yes. very, like it's nice and filled and packed. That's a good show today, brother. Um, we'll be back on, so we got Houston for three. Yes. We'll be back on Monday. Now, on Labor Day. It sucks. If only the Yankees won the series now against Detroit, but what if the Yankees take two out of three against Houston and then we have Detroit at home and we sweep them? We're, bro, we're back because then I'm feeling so good about that $10 bet. Oh yeah. Your American League pennant bet. Yo, shout out to all the commenters. Shout out to everybody, the viewers who, you know, like subscribe and us with, uh, with us the whole entire way. We appreciate you guys so much. And yeah, socials, where can they find you? Uh, la- last thing I do want to say before socials. Yeah. Um, we're not going to go any deeper, but once again, I've been saying this every show, Alex Rodriguez will be on the Yankees Avenue show by the end of 2023. Um, socials. That's what? bro. Yeah. I'm no, no, I'm, so I'm yeah, saying a word text. Um, socials, uh, Instagram at true Hennessy, TikTok and Twitter at unhinge patcher. Twitter, Dan on work. I don't know why I said it anymore. I tweet like once every two weeks. But uh, Yankees Avenue on Instagram. Yankees Avenue here on YouTube. Subscribe if you are new. What are you smiling for, buddy? All right. When's like the next like Logan or Jake fight? Uh, Logan's have... fighting October 14th. Yeah, with Dylan. Like Dylan... Yeah, he seems like a fucking tool, that Dylan Dennis, dude. Yeah, he's going to sleep him, bro. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, is that like WWE or? No, have... it's boxing. Okay, forgive me that I thought Logan Paul was doing WWE. No, he's I'm doing both, sure He just bro. did like three weeks ago. Oh, so for why? Why do you give me the dickhead look when I says? Well, no, because so... no, because if someone, if, if you're saying someone's fighting someone else, like you just assume it's boxing, bro. I guess. I guess. I don't really, dude. I'm sorry. I'm not. Too you have a prediction. The reason. 
I'll always root Logan, so I think he's nice. gonna. And I think like yo know, Dylan Dennis, as far as I'm concerned, like probably has had like the upper hand beef wise. I feel like which it, the way I see it, like probably just pisses Logan yeah, off bro, more. Yeah, bro, dude hasn't fought in four years, and he's not. How about he fights somebody who actually fucking fights? Logan? Yeah. Bro, All Logan of them... hasn't boxed in like over two years. Okay, I guess Logan is cool, but like, and he fought Floyd Mayweather. Like, dude. I mean, <laughs> Come on. Oh, okay, let's get out of here, buddy. Bro. Let's get out of here. <laughs> All, All right, right but... we'll see you guys next time. Let's go, Yankees. Her body's gone like September. She burns through the night like an ember. And all those things we tried forgetting, I remember. But we say we are.